Can you believe it? I am at episode 71. Let's clap it up. Let's clap it up. I became a critter. <laughs> I'm just... <laughs> okay, all jokes aside, in all honesty, before I was a critter, I'm completely just a content creator altogether. You know, I don't want to be... I don't mind. I don't want to be labeled too much as directly critical role i like putting out the critical role stuff as long as it's if it's recommended or sent to me i want to cover it because that's just me upholding my identity as doing this so if anything is recommended to me i will check it out and if it's critical role complete complete plus because i enjoy it but i i do not want to get too attached to being known for being a critic like because in all honesty i'm just completely enjoying it for entertainment and i definitely want to play DD, but i'm not like well versed in knowing too much in DD, so i don't want people to kind of think you know or to come to me for some crazy breakdowns and and wild shit i'm just showing you know what, I, what i'm enjoying and uh or well the parts i'm enjoying and i, I hope for people watching that i'm doing a, a good job of keeping you guys entertained and i mean that and i am grateful for all the support and i will continue to put out critical role stuff because i am enjoying it and i'm just doing it for me and for the ones who enjoy it at the end of the day i'm not trying to you know say i'm some like dnd master I'm clearly not you can see my journey online with this whole thing but i'm definitely i don't want to get too involved where i'm like okay like this is what i do i am a D and D type like creator because I'm not. Would I ever be? I wouldn't mind if I spiraled off in that direction. But <laughs> let's get back on topic now. And once again, thank you. I still see people coming into like the first things I watched about like Vox mocking and stuff. Also, I started campaign one. The editing for the video will take a bit, so I've been holding out on that a little bit of like just finding some time to put it together because like when i was following campaign three so far i realized it's kind of a lot to watch the whole four hours try not to fall asleep then try to cut it down in the best way that you can enjoy it but family gathering that is where i'm at episode 71 so what is everything i can tell you here well quickly let me grab a screenshot while we're here of the episode because i have it up right now 71 boom quick 71 and what I have to say is, oh, there's a lot I could say. I'm pretty sure a bunch of you already know. So let me say spoilers, but not try hard because the moment I start to say eh, and try to think about what I'm not going to spoil, I fuck up. Or like me, it fucks up my train of thought. So spoilers for anything. I could reference campaign three. So just if, you, if that bothers you, please leave. <laughs> Respectfully. <laughs> Okay, anyways, all right, let's get back on track. <sighs> Yasha backstory. Holy fucking shit. So one thing I want to ask real quick, though, it's 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 a bit self like I could pick it up on my own and I kind of already know the answer without saying it. But I need to know if this is confirmed. The story can go in any direction. It is not not by any means it is not like can like held down is what i'm trying to say like i i seen that clearly from the bright queen but i'm trying to learn what matt does in terms of setting up certain scenarios for things to ride smoother because them siding with the bright queen was totally you know he thought that there was going to be a whole jailbreak which since we're there, before I lose that, because I was going to mention that later, might as well mention it now, was after Caleb, so it's episode seven, uh, 71, spoilers, after they went to the jail, this is their return from the Yasha little bit of backstory we got in Oban, oh, Oban. so before we get there, this is them returning, we're jumping a little bit ahead and back, we're going to go all over the place, and you know, them talking with the queen, catching her up, the releasing of the, the the she already spoke with Jester, them going down to the prison, 
or the the whatever that shit's called the howling depths i don't know i forgot it's like this this something there's a more specific name and i'm just joking but um when they got down there caleb wanted to talk to the scourger of course because you know i I assume um, he asked if it was astrid so i'm pretty sure he went with the intentions to see if it was astrid that got caught wasn't astrid but it was someone who knew him um yeah so where am i there so how matt describes how time and like the times they went down with essek which i think they only went this is their only second time being down there i'm pretty sure yeah uh the the like the way like it's built like a maze and they seem they as they move through they get like this nauseous feeling of this like there's obviously some magical enchantment and also this goes down four levels or well they went to the fourth level this time and i don't know how many levels there actually are but i i wanted to cover this for their decision because i already said it in in my video and i've seen a few people agree this this had me double down i'm gonna have to let the lisp fly some people think it's cute i think it's just so annoying but i'm gonna have to let it fly so i can just fucking talk more clear um <laughs> uh i think them siding with the queen was the best course of action that they could have taken there and now seeing the prison and matt describing it more in depth each time that they go only been twice this was designed to be fucking hard to escape I would love to peer into an alternate timeline. I kind of actually thought about them having a prison break. I seen it in my head before everything happened because I was like, oh, they're arrested and either executed or whatever. But they were in some pretty deep shit right there. They were going to be in some deep shit if they didn't pull off what they did. And this prison damn near seems inescapable for what they would have tried to pull off. And then now that I think about it, like think about Essek. They would have to go... I know the prison isn't, I don't think it's directly attached to the main part of, well, it, it's like a part of the main part, but not attached to where maybe higher level people could get there. But I thought like the arsenal that they had and maybe thinking of like Essex as even an enemy, that it was going to be a, a really difficult time to get out of the prison there. Like, like, and even if they got released, maybe they were going to have to be some slaves of some sort. Who knows, but time would have passed very long and it would have been a, a, an interesting timeline to see. But bringing all that up, I wanted to say like, okay, with them going to Yasha, that seemed a bit... I don't want to say it seemed staged, but it seemed a little bit too linear. Obviously, she's not here in this episode, which I'm assuming she went again for some shooting for something, maybe. You know, I'm, I'm, I think I'm getting around the time where she's becoming more permanent to, to they're just going to be all together for a while. But something about that seemed way too, you know, because, you know, they, they intercepted the meeting that the drow was there and then that turned up to be Oban. But them saying you know like why did we even come here or why do we even like we didn't even really need to come here was that part of it true was that all unique because to me something about like you know they're they're still like they're still you know i believe that they're still taking the story wherever they want to go and matt is just giving them a gentle hand but the points with yasha seem a bit you know uh, of course um i think it was they did they get rid of Jester for a bit when it was like no 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 no, no it wasn't it wasn't it was it was it was Yasha when she was shooting they did the unique things with like her leaving and always finding her way back to the group which those moments I realized were okay done for her absence so it makes sense but now that part seemed a bit was that one like the other times was it stage two I don't know I don't want to dwell too much on it because it doesn't bother me as much if it is. But it just would suck because that was such a fucking crazy part. I was literally asking myself the entire time when they were dungeon delving in that shit going chamber to chamber. Why the fuck are they coming in here? Then when it got to the fight with Oban, I was like, holy fuck. Why the fuck did they come in here? I was losing my mind. 
I really need to stream these moments or record them and just make those the videos because I'm literally getting the best parts. I was saying this during my stream. I lose my absolute fucking shit. And I was losing my mind during that. I was, I called my friend. We always make some, uh, it's Travis, man. I'm a fan of Travis, like Travis fanboy here. I'm not even going to hide it anymore. But he was like, I'm going to send some Eldritch Blast. He was like, if you know the Eldritch Blast go through the roof, you know we're about to turn up or shit is turning up. I can't. I'm so weak at Travis every fucking time as playing Ford. Um, but uh, what I can say, that, that wasn't at the part with Oban, but that shit was crazy. Ford. I thought Ford was a goner. I could not believe what was going on. Like, I could say so much about the chambers, and I could sum it up as quickly as I can. I could be like this. Ready? The lightning shit where they were going down and that missed the spiders. Oh, easy. Spiders, a uh, fucking spiraling stair staircase of death with laser beams and elders bass, and it absorbed magic and shot it back up, and it got stronger every round. That shit was crazy. They get to the bottom, open the door, then the zombies and the fucking golden hearts, then the maze, the mirror maze, and the fucking... The, the copies of themselves, the bridge, and the, the fucking voices coming up from the bridge, not fucking cutting. Yes, I'm just going to cover this quickly. I don't know why Sam decided to cut. Or, you know, we'll say not or Sam. You know, Sam slash not, I'll just start saying. Slam said, or, or just Sam not. <laughs> cut the fucking rope. And the whispers came and made not just dive off the edge. I almost, I almost hit my head off the fucking, I didn't know how deep it was because I wasn't paying attention, but when I heard what was down there, the spiraling teeth and the eyes and the mouth, and I was like, not just, yeah, just, just cut yourself from the rope and fucking forget about the voices and whoop, off the edge, just really tested luck there. But also what I learned, uh, which was crazy was they, it took, uh, Matt said it'll take them three rounds to full sprint across the bridge. It almost seems like they should have did that from the beginning instead of going stealthily, but they didn't know what dangers they were getting into. So moving stealthily was smart. But after they learned, uh, yeah, I guess them running across when they were running from uh, Yasha and the laughing hand worked out pretty well. But yeah, that first getting there was crazy. I thought when they were lifted up in the air that they would have dropped and died. But I think, well, if they dropped, I don't think many of them could have got up. So it would have been. Fucking, there was a lot of little TPK moments coming in there, especially the fight with the Laughing Hand. It wasn't really TPK, but it was a three-party member loss, it seemed like. But that wall of fire was clutch for them to get away from, um, or put the, when Caleb put the wall, uh, <laughs> Liam Caleb put the wall of fire between Ford and the Laughing Hand, though it was still gripped on Ford. I, I was like, oh, that was an emotional moment. And Jester, her feelings after the whole Yasha thing went down, damn, that, that hit a little bit too. And like Jester's kind of attitude changing for the, the time being. Even Ford kind of looking at Yasha and being like, why? That was that was, that was was deep. That that hit a little bit. And it was fuck, fucking like a little bit tense, them getting out of that chamber. But it's so fucking cool. Nah, 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 I won't get into it. But it was... It was Tense situation. I'm glad I just remembered all this and managed to get it out in 13 minutes. <laughs> so, to go any further, nah, I'll probably I'll probably keep keep it pretty short so everyone can get through and not make like a 40 minute thing, which I could. But you know the the rest, them getting the house, them lining with the queen was crazy. All that I kind of I think I covered in the other video. Um, it's uh, you could tell fucking with Ford. Caleb's fucking dropping like his Zenmi, Zen, Zenmian, Zenmian accent sounding like just straight English is pretty fucking cool and like uh, that's like a twist it's like straight regular and then there's the the other accent he does is like German but um yeah uh, Caduceus revealing more of his backstory it's just it's just been a wild ride. It's it's there's a lot I could say. The traveler saying more to Jester and that it's time to meet soon. I want to see if Bo is actually. I it would actually be cool. No, sp well, spoil it if you want to. I'm not, I'm not reading the comments. No, I'm just joking. But I would want to see Bo lined up with one of the gods. That'd be cool. 
if like one of the gods sees her or she starts hearing a voice if that starts happening the campaign too will forever have a place in my heart it already does um where where else uh I think I don't have much else. There's probably honorable mentionable moments that I've got that I can uh, mention. I don't know. I, like I said, I don't want to make this too long. I kind of just wanted to make a quick, hey, this is what what's going on. Holy shit, this is crazy. I'm losing my fucking mind watching this kind of thing. But for the most part, <laughs> yeah, holy shit. It's been a fucking, it's been a turn. It's been a turn adventure. Oh, shit. You know what I actually should? Okay, so if you've made it to here and you want to click off, go ahead. I'm going to tell you all actually a, a bit about what I was thinking. So this is for, for the hardcore ones that can stick out the rest of the video. If you made it right here, you could just uh, put a big Eldritch Blast. Big. I want, like, I want you to put it all caps as long as you want to. Eldritch Blast. Just the, the yeah. <laughs> okay, so there have been been a few things. I won't drag this long for like much longer. There is. Holy shit. Um, I almost. Oh, I can't. I can't say. It. I almost like wanted to inject. I wish I could like inject myself into the campaign. Like when Dyron came to meet Bo. Oh, and as for like the symbol, I was like, yo, is Bo going to give it to her? Like that shit would be crazy. And then they all, they all kind of seem like to say like, oh yeah, give her everything we've learned. Like just, just hand it over or like not the symbol, but all information that could help besides like literally saying that we gave her, or we gave the, wait, I think they did tell her that we gave the dynasty, the Dodecahedron. Oh yeah, it was, it was, it wasn't, it was, um. They didn't tell her that they were the one that tipped the queen off about the invaders and the, the scourges and shit like that. But um, aside from that, yeah, I, I think I don't I don't have much else. I feel like, oh, actually, here's my predictions for the future episodes with uh, Caleb's teleportation. So I don't know if this is accurate, but... Uh, <laughs> Even if I I see a bunch of uh, can't say much in the comments, I'm gonna I'm gonna say this. Um, I think their time in Jorhas is coming up. I think they're gonna have to leave soon. I think Essek and Caleb are gonna keep a interesting relationship. I um. I think the wizard tower that they're at right now, they're actually not. They're with uh, Jester's mother, the Ruby of the Sea. Uh, but the wizard in that tower is going to play a bit more of a role. Um, what else do we got? Um, but I think their time in Jorhas is coming to an end. I'm kind of ready to see it. Um, I don't like them being in Jorhas because I feel like Though they're building a lot of trust, I feel like it's really shaky trust. Matt is not low with what he says, and I pay attention very well to some of the things that go straight over their heads. Like we've, I've been uh, informed now that yes, they have the awareness that they have really low awareness, and it, it does make for a way better story that they don't catch everything. I think that be that would make it a problem for me to play. I would just be someone who's too attentive to like. Matt's tricks but th this is all the more makes me want to play even more I want to play so bad so bad but I've got to also find the time maybe give myself a break from doing so many videos but I'm having fun doing it so no stoppage for me or shortage anytime soon but what I will say is yeah he dropped little hints that the bright queen has lived many many lives and she can see through most most tricks and it's hard to even read her. And I'm like, mm, I, I have this weird feeling that I feel like the queen has a good heart with when they brought back the dodecahedron. She was, it was all honest emotion though. And I still feel now, like even when she said there's good news, like the tip off you guys gave us, hey, it worked. Um, but I still feel like there's something that's gonna happen where the queen's 
going to be absent or fall sick and then someone's going to take her rule or or something's going to happen where like Essek tells them like yo like they made friends with the wizard Woka or Woka in the in the, that place and Essek and it's like Essek and Woka are going to have to like help them escape like the you know the dynasty and like Essek has a closer relationship with Caleb and it's going to be this weird thing where they got to escape Jorahas. But I know an escape is coming soon because of uh, the thing that's giving me the tip off is Caleb's ability to use the, the teleport. Um, or, yeah, to to you. Yeah, to to use the teleport. And I feel like they're going to have to hold down their house and there's going to be like an army marching on their house and they're going to have to all teleport out of. The thing and then break the runes on the ground or try to sever the connection so one can't be made to and they're going to teleport to like the wizard tower or somewhere in the empire and probably cut their thing off in Jorahas. Jorahas is done like they, they can't return back to the, the thing and I want to see the story end up where they're able to end up stop the war I got I want to see it stop I want to see them be able to eventually end this thing so I guess we'll see and that is where I'm at. Or or not end the war, but bring a peace period. I want to see them get overpowered too with their gods or whatever they got to do. Um, like I said, when I, when I started campaign one, I seen they, I swear they were making better rolls than I've ever seen. 25 episodes. Like I'm not 20. Oh yeah, because I didn't post the video or make, I think make the video where I said I, I said, heard that or was told multiple times that episode 25 was a good place to start in campaign one. So I'm just saying, I don't know what level they are, but that, you know, they, they were, the roles they were making that seemed crazy compared to the shit they were doing in campaign two. But I like that because in campaign two, it seemed like a lot of the roles are more on clutch moments and, and funny and like hysterical when they need to be. Aside from that, I think that's all from me. That is... I am halfway through episode 71, and yeah, that's it. I'm uh, enjoying. I'm glad Ford hasn't died. I'm glad none of the cur current party has died. I'm glad that, at least in the most dire of moments, they make great decisions to keep their teammates alive and just keep keep this shit moving because some of the, some of the decisions leading up to some of these battles, I'd be like, what the fuck? fuck are they doing but you know that's all part of the enjoyment you you get to sit back and go through this roller coaster of fucking feeling you're like holy shit what the fuck but i love it so without further ado i'm going to end the video much love and light and i would like to say eldritch blast and see you guys in the next one peace